companies are a tool in the toolkit of the entrepreneur. And today we talk about how to actually start the company, especially if you are a foreigner. Hello, Pia. Hello. Nice to have you here. Nice to be here. Pia, why is entrepreneurship important to you? Um, I've been an entrepreneur for several years. Uh, for me, it's, it's about the freedom mostly uh, to do what I want in the way that I want to uh, be able to, at least on paper, be in charge of your timetable and even your income level and make a difference in the field that, uh, that you're operating in. Mm, that's a good point. So why should somebody consider starting a company? I think mainly for the <laughs> same reasons. So you you um, you're able to make a difference. A lot of the companies that um, I'm advising have a really passionate starting point to what they want to accomplish. It can be really big things, and as an entrepreneur, you have the possibility to to accomplish that. So on practical level, what should you consider when you want to start a company? Uh, you should. Uh, test your business idea. That's probably the most important thing. So find out if there's a need and a willingness to pay for what you're you're about to do. And then you should draft a business plan. That's a very important tool for you to get you from your I want to become an entrepreneur stage into a fluent and, and, and a lubricant business operation. Um, and do the calculations that uh, show how much you need to invest into the business operation and, and how much you need to make in order to meet the make the ends meet. Um, then it's time to consider funding. Where do you find the funding, whether it's for your company or for yourself? In Finland, we have something called a startup grant, which is aimed for the entrepreneur. And um, you cannot, if you want to opt for, for applying for startup grant, you cannot actually register the company before that. So um, after receiving the uh, uh, information that you have got the startup grant, you can register the company and then it's time to find a bookkeeper, especially if you're a foreigner, a bookkeeper, a good bookkeeper in Finland can save you a lot of money and especially time and um, set up a bank account. And if you're a foreigner, it's also advised, advisable to, to check what kind of permits, whether it's residence permits or permits and licenses in, in regard of your line of business you might need. Okay, so in short, kind of you need to search first for a business idea that makes sense. So one thing is not enough, but make sure that it makes sense to start yeah. a company. And then when you actually have enough information, then plan and do the calculation so that you can actually take the leap of faith. Yeah. So it's not that much of a leap of faith anymore. So when you know that you actually are going to start a company, what kind of companies can you start? Well, the easiest probably would be a sole trader. Um, you're, as per, per the name, you are a sole trader. You cannot be more than one person. If you are more than one per person, probably the next uh, option would be a limited liability company, which is uh, advisable as well if you're having risks or, or um, you need to invest a lot into the company um, or you know that the company is going to grow and you want to have more shareholders in the future. Um, then there is also something called light entrepreneurship, which isn't really a uh, form of business in itself. It's a marketing name for um, two different kinds of invoicing services, if you wish. Uh, the so-called traditional light entrepreneurship is something where you somewhere where you um, you are invoicing through the company and they pay your salary. So as as a matter of fact, you're not an entrepreneur in that version. Uh, there's another version as well where you do get a business idea and uh, ID number, sorry, and legally you are then a entrepreneur. Uh, and there, the light entrepreneurship company works as a invoicing company as well as a bookkeeper for you. I think could you explain a bit more this this difference between a, a, a light entrepreneurship? and a company, for instance, because I think that's not entirely clear. And then there's all sole trader. Yeah. So when you have a, a light entrepreneurship, there is and you're not really normally an entrepreneur, but there is some kind of, of company that is not your company, but another company. And this other company 
uh, takes care of all the administration and, and they are registered and yeah. you are like employed in this company exactly. and you get paid. Yeah. So if we're considering the light, uh, traditional light entrepreneurship, you are um, on a payroll of a company and you invoice through them, you are not technically a entrepreneur. Uh, light entrepreneurship is a legal on, uh, form of, of business. It's a marketing name for, for these invoicing services. And um, especially when you're um, making large sums of money and uh, uh, there are implications concerning tax, especially VAT, that you might want to take into consideration when thinking whether light entrepreneurship is the option for you or you would like to actually uh, have a company. After an entrepreneur has made an analysis that he or she wants to start a company, mm-hmm. how that actually happens in really practical level? Setting up a company in Finland is really easy. You register to patent and registration offices website and there are tutorials and instructions on, on depending on the form of company you want to register. It normally takes about half an hour to two hours depending on how prepared you are. Um, so that's the easy part. And then you still have to uh, give some details to tax authorities, but you can do that online. So no no stamps, no papers. It's, it's quite hassle-free if you have your online banking codes. So what tax implications should you consider when you start a company? Uh, well, as an entrepreneur, you still have your own taxation to take care about, uh, but then you have the taxation of your company. And there are two registers that you have to register in. The first is for your company's income, uh, income tax, which you pay beforehand based on the estimation that you have given to tax authorities as pre-tax. So the other register is VAT register. Uh, at the moment, the general VAT is 24%. There are some ex- exceptions to that rule. Uh, go go to the website of tax taxation office in Finland and you'll find it there. And also, if you make less than 15,000 a year, and that's today's situation as well, uh, then you are not, uh, you don't have to pay VAT. Uh, is there any case where you would want to pay the VAT, even though you are below the threshold? Yes, there is, especially if you are selling um, goods. So you have to buy something in, or you have to invest in in producing whatever it is that you're selling. You can deduct the VAT of your purchases from the VAT of your sales, and if then at the end of the year you your income is is fourteen thousand nine hundred and ninety nine, you can actually apply for the VAT that you paid to be paid back to you. So, so you get to keep more of the money that you make. Yep, absolutely. Let's talk about funding of the of the company. When you start a company, you normally or very often you need some funding. Mm-hmm. So what shall you do as an entrepreneur? Well, in Finland, we have two ways of funding. The first one is for the entrepreneur. So when the uh, company hasn't really started to uh, flow or fly, uh, we have something called a startup grant, which is granted for six months and then for another application for other six for another six months. So uh, at the most for a year. And that's the money for you as an entrepreneur, not for the company. As for the company, well, equity capital is is the most often used version for funding. Uh, for traditional companies, uh, we have bank loans, of course, which can partly be quarantined by Finvera. Um, for startups, there's um, there are technology startups. Startups, there's uh, other forms of funding as well, like uh, Business Finland or or uh, some forms of funding from Elu Center as well. How is it to is it to get the funding, or uh, what do you have to know about it to get it? So um, the startup grant, if you want to op- uh, apply for that, you need to apply for that and get the decision before you actually uh, register the company. If you have already registered the company, then you don't get the startup grant, or it's going to be significantly harder. Uh, we have grant money also for companies um, as well as loan money. Loan money you have to pay back. Grant money. Uh, not, uh, but of, obviously, if you can also fund the company by customer purchases, that would be great. So, so generate the income as you go. What else should an entrepreneur know about pensions, um, for instance? As you become an entrepreneur, you need to take care of your own social security. So, if you have been on um, on a payroll before, your 
employer has paid most of your social security fees. But as an, uh, as an entrepreneur, you take that responsibility to yourself. So there is something called the entrepreneur's uh, pension insurance, and it doesn't just cover your pension, it covers also your social security. So um, parenthood allowance, uh, sick day benefits or unemployment benefits. And it's uh, advisable to go and, and check uh, the websites of the pension insurance companies. And, and there are calculators where you can see how much the uh, real income that you decide to use affects your social security. And you're obliged to take that if, if your income is more than 8,261 a year. And this is for uh, 2022. Um, uh, but uh, and it, it doesn't matter if you're a full or part-time entrepreneur. Okay. So that's something you need to know. Also, there are some licenses uh, uh, regarding to, for example, social health care or restaurant business or some regulated businesses that you need to know and take care of before you actually start the company because that, that could cost you time and money to, to get those in order. And uh, there's a very good website at suomi.fi, which, uh, which states the permits and, and obligations for a entrepreneur, which is worth visiting. So agree. And, and for the students, it's good to remember that if you are an entrepreneur, the price of this social security and pension is different than if you hire somebody and get the same level of security for that employee of your company. And that's a good point because also uh, when it comes to your salary, it's different whether you're a private person or, or on a payroll or an entrepreneur. And even when we talk about different forms of companies, there are different forms where we, through which you can get your salary. As a sole trader, you can lift as much money as you have on the account uh, and nobody's going to ask uh, about it. Uh, as a limited liability company, you pay yourself salary and if the company does good, you also have a possibility to, to take dividends. So uh, with a bigger income, a limited liability company might be a better option. Okay, so having a limited liability company is a good idea, but who can actually start a company in Finland? Um, basically anybody, also a company, but that's a different story. So uh, if you are a, a EU citizen or, or living in the European economic area, then then go ahead, get a get an address in Finland and start your company. If you come from outside of EU, there are some things that you have to take into consideration, like the um, residence permit, for example. So if you need a visa to actually be in Finland, what uh, with what kind of visas can you start a company? Um, so if you are, for example, a student with a B permit, uh, you can start as a light entrepreneur or you can um, be a part of a limited liability company. But if you are a student, you cannot work more than 25 hours, I think it was a week. Uh, and um, so it's, it's part time job. If you then want to be become a full time entrepreneur, then we have something called the entrepreneur visa or the startup entrepreneur visa and uh, or permit and the difference uh, there is a huge difference at least when it uh, uh, the, in the processing time when an entrepreneur visa can take from four to six months to to go through the startup entrepreneur visa is just one to two months okay what about what about the visas or or permits for the for the board of directors do they need permits or um if you want, if there's people in the company who have who are uh, have a pers permanent residence in the European Economic Area, then not. Uh, but if you want to set up a company with totally uh, uh, foreign-based uh, ownership or or leadership outside with people outside of from outside of EU, then uh, there are permissions that are needed from pa Patent and Registration Office. And how easy is it to get this permission? Uh, it depends totally on the business idea and, and the uh, economical capabilities of the company to be established. Um, for, for a foreigner, I'm, I'm myself not from Finland originally, so for a foreigner coming to Finland, it might not, it might be like a jungle, you don't know where to start. So, so if I come here as a foreigner from the EU or then from, from outside the EU, where do I get help? 
uh, for example, from Nuco Helsinki, we're fully owned by the city of Helsinki. So uh, we're a non-profit organization. So all our ser- of, of our services are free of charge and naturally confidential. Uh, 42% of our client base is uh, non-Finnish speakers. So, so we're quite happy to help people to get around, even if you're, there is a lot of information to be found uh, in English, but it's, it's quite scattered. And if you don't have the vocabulary or the uh, knowledge on where to search, then it might be difficult. So we're happy to help you there as well. So in practice, I go there and book a meeting. Yes, we have online meetings. We have um, a lot of events, uh, info events, even online uh, in several languages. Uh, We offer services in seven plus two languages. Um, And uh, there is a um, booklet called uh, Becoming an Entrepreneur in Finland uh, on our website. There's a lot of information there as well. But uh, yeah, you can book a personal appointment. It can be live or it can be in Teams. So, what do you mean by seven plus plus two uh, languages? So uh, we have seven uh, official languages and then two kind of under the counter. So we have two persons who speak uh, one uh, perfect uh, Italian and the other uh, French, but they're not official. So, Pia, what key takeaways do you have for entrepreneurs? Um, there's the government and institution of Finland are extremely happy to help, which is quite hard to believe for for many of my foreign clients. Uh, for example, the tax authorities uh, have tremendously good customer service, and in most cases, they are on your side, so to say. I, when I was an entrepreneur, uh, I had a year where I was um, making more money than I thought I would, and I would uh, I, I tried to make an announcement that I want to raise my pre-taxes. And the guy on the other side, uh, on the other side of the line, was quiet for a bit, and then he said, "Well, if you have any investments to make, this would be a good time because otherwise your taxes would raise too high." So he actually advised me to not to raise my taxes but do something else. So that's Finnish tax authorities for you. And there is English service available. It can be a bit tricky to find at times, but um, in case you need time, uh, need help finding it, we're here to help you. Thank you, Pia. Thank you. Very good information. It was a pleasure being here.